So, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, really glad to be here. Um, so I'll present a work titled Mad HTLC because HTLC is crazy cheap to attack. Uh, so HTLCs are a basic building block in many cryptocurrency constructions like the Lightning Network, for example. And they're known to be vulnerable to bribery attacks on Ethereum. And in this work, we show these attacks are simpler and cheaper and apply even to Bitcoin. And we also propose a solution which we call Mad HTLC, uh, which is a secure and incentive compatible uh, and you can just plug it in and you'll be okay. Um, this is a joint work with Motan, Alex, and Itai, and you can find it in the proceedings of uh, IEEE Security and Privacy uh, of, uh, of this year. And there's also an uh, archive version on that. Uh, I'll start with some background. So uh, th the point in blockchain cryptocurrencies is to have a system that has transactions of tokens uh, among the users. Uh, and we use the blockchain as the main data structure for that. The system is operated by miners. Um, their job is to include transactions in blocks and they receive fees for doing that. Uh, miners are incentivized to optimize which transactions they put in which block. Uh, and we call these optimization opportunities as um, we refer to them as minor extractable volume. Okay, so we have the miners optimizing and they, they choose which transaction to put. The, the tokens, the system tokens are associated with contracts. Okay, these are predicates that uh, are evaluated on transaction data and the predicate must uh, be evaluated positively and then you can transact the tokens. Uh, uh, we say that uh, transactions uh, redeem the contracts if they manage to get the predicate to evaluate positively and a contract can be redeemed only once. Okay, so this is uh, just as the double spend uh, issues. Uh, and since we're all blockchain enthusiasts, I'll say this is like Bitcoin uh, lingo, uh, UTXO lingo, but you can have similar arguments in an account-based model. HTLCs or stands for uh, hash time block contracts. These are contracts uh, established by two users. Uh, I'll refer to them as Antman and Batman. And they include the hash digest of some uh, cryptographic uh, hash function and the time of T, which we measure in blocks. And as I said before, they're the main building block for many cryptocurrency systems like the Lightning Network, atomic swaps, contingent payments, and so on. The, the predicate of an HTLC looks like this. Uh, so either Antman gets the HTLC tokens uh, by providing a matching pre-image for the, for, the uh, for, for the hash digest, uh, or Batman gets the tokens uh, after the time of the lapses. And I'll refer to this as a hash lock and a time lock respectively. So consider the blockchain and consider an HLC initiated on block X. Yeah, that means that uh, Batman can get the tokens starting only at block X plus T and only if the tokens had, hadn't been taken yet by Antman. And please note that the miners are those who pick which transaction goes into which block. When the, the, the systems I mentioned before use an HTLC, they make an, uh, an explicit and implicit assumption uh, that, that goes as follows. They assume that if Antman publishes a redeeming transaction before the timeout, then that transaction is indeed included in the blockchain. However, there is a known issue here because the miners are those who pick which transaction goes into the blockchain. So this assumption neglects the miners' incentives. So when we have an assumption that is not mad, there's an, an attack opportunity, uh, which goes as follows. Uh, Batman, instead of uh, being passive in this uh, scenario, he decides to bribe the miners to, to exclude Antman's transaction until the time of elapses, and then to take his transaction instead. Uh, consider the following two example. Say we have an HTLC with five tokens and uh, Antman uh, offered a single token as fee. So in the intended scenario, we'd have Antman getting four tokens, uh, Batman getting none, and the miners getting a single token. Uh, however, if Batman decides to bribe, say with two tokens, then uh, Antman would get nothing, Batman would get three tokens, and the miners would get two. And this is clearly better for both Batman and the miners. 
So th th this, uh, this idea was discussed uh, and, and presented by uh, Windsor et al. Uh, and they suggested coordinating this uh, bribery attack uh, using smart contracts. Um, there's, there's suggestion or uh, implementation uh, only applies to Ethereum, but not to Bitcoin because the contract itself uh, was uh, quite complex. Um, it also um, meant that it, uh, you'd have to deploy the contract before the, the actually attack starts. So you'd have costs regardless if the attack succeeds or not. Um, they analyzed the required bribe that the Batman would have to offer. And they considered two scenarios. Uh, the, and the first is that when all other miners also support the attack, uh, and then the cost, the required bribe would be independent in the timeline. However, if all other miners object the attack, then the attack would be, the, the required bribe would be exponential in the time. Okay, so these are the amounts that uh, uh, Batman would have to offer as bribe to incentivize a single miner to support it. Okay, and it depends on all other miners as well. In this work, uh, we, sh we show that there's a simpler variation uh, that is cheaper and it applies also to Bitcoin. So instead of using a, an elaborate contract, we can simply bribe using the fee mechanism. Okay, so Batman would offer a transaction with a higher fee that yes, be, uh, is valid only in the future, but it still offers a higher fee. This is the bribe. Uh, this makes it Bitcoin compatible and it means it has no, it requires no prior deployment. And so if the attack fails, Batman didn't lose anything. Um, and, and we analyze this attack variation using a game. We consider Ant-Man, Batman, and the miners as part of the, as, as the players in this game. And we define the game to, to comprise uh, rounds or sub games, uh, describing the creation of the T blocks until the time it elapses. And we, we know that the suitable solution concept for this game is sub game perfect equilibrium. Um, this captures the, the ongoing decision-making that the parties make throughout the game progress. And uh, I'll give you some intuition about what SP is. So consider the game of tic-tac-toe uh, and say you want to decide what, what action you want to take. Excuse me. So what you would do is you actually simulate the way all of, sorry, uh, you say, okay, I'll take this action and then the, the other parties will take that action and then it will be my turn. So I'll take that action and so forth. And what you do is, Basically, you simulate all the game extensions, and then you take the action that leads you to the desired result. And uh, it's an equilibrium when every party uh, chooses the action that uh, leads to their desired result at each step in the way, along the way. So after this analysis, uh, we get the following results. First, uh, the required bribe is not dependent, is independent uh, in, in the timeout. Uh, so this is a conceptual problem. Uh, it's not something, it's not like a parameter that you can tweak to make the attack more expensive uh, as, uh, as the exponential cost uh, suggests. Uh, this, the attack is, in the, the cost is independent in timeout. So simply increasing the timeout is, does not make it too expensive or it does not increase its cost at all. Um, and we also found multiple instances on the Bitcoin network where one could, uh, uh, apply this attack uh, and it's actually really really cheap and it can be extremely rewarding so we found multiple instances where a two dollar two dollar bribe could result with a twenty six thousand dollars reward uh, i should mention that we don't we didn't exhibit the attack today uh but this is probably due to the current mv optimizations are kind somewhat immature miners are not looking for these types of bribes so the users are not offering them so no attack as of today, but obviously that can change at any moment. So yeah, HTCs are kind of <laughs> kind of cheap to attack, and then how can we protect them, right? So maybe uh, maybe we can get Antman to counter bribe, and that would solve the problem. So we actually considered that, um, and and we showed there is an asymmetry here. Okay, so. Obviously, if Antman counter bribes, then Batman can counter counter bribe and so forth. And there is some sort of an asymmetry here, um, and and the required counter bribe by Antman would be uh, 
about one percent of the of, of the total uh, reward in the contract and going back to the previous example that would be uh, over ten thousand times overhead so actually counter bribes are not practical okay they're too expensive uh, to, to be actually used and and we need a systematic solution so uh, yeah let's design a new hclc which we call mad hclc so th the problem was with the original hclc that we neglected the miners we neglected their incentives and the way that uh, they interacted with our contract so let's not do that anymore Let, let's consider them as part of the contract we actually can incentivize them to enforce the desired execution and to deter such a bribery attacks. Uh, quick overview of, of the remainder of this talk. So first I'll describe how the, the MED HCC construction uh, looks like. Uh, it's design, uh, it's a UC security proof, it's in terms of compatibility proofs. Uh, then I'll discuss uh, our implementation and some network deployments. And finally, I'll conclude with a Bitcoin MEV info. So MAD uh, stands for uh, Mutual Assured Destruction. This is uh, an idea from game theory stating that uh, both parties uh, refrain from attacking each other because if they do so, they will both end up losing. So this is the deterrence mechanism. Uh, I think the most famous example would be the Cold War where uh, the, the United States and, and the Soviet Union wouldn't uh, nuke each other because they knew the other party would retaliate. So this is the deterrence mechanism, and this is the main idea behind our construction. Uh, and specifically, if in, in our discussion, if, if Ant-Man or Batman uh, misbehave, then they both end up losing. So the, how the contract is, uh, is built, so it comprises two subcontracts. Uh, the first we call the deposit. This is the main uh, HTLC-like uh, functionality. Uh, we have an auxiliary contract called the collateral. It's optional and it's used only to prevent uh, spitefulness. Uh, I'll mention that uh, the separation is, is for Bitcoin compatibility, but uh, as I'll show you later, we have an uh, Ethereum implementation where it, they are both consolidated into a single contract. Um, the, the, the building blocks are the same. Uh, we, we're, we have a, a time lock. This is just like the HTLC time lock. And uh, we have two hash locks now. Uh, the first will be just like the original HTC hash lock. Uh, I'll call this hash lock one. And we have a new hash lock, hash lock two, which is an addition for our, our construction. So how, how does the predicate of the deposit contract, the main functionality uh, looks like? Uh, the first option is really just like in the original HTC. So we have Antman can get the tokens by solving the first hash lock. Uh, the second option to get the tokens from this contract uh, resembles the, the second option of, in HTLC. Uh, so we have Batman that can get the tokens after the time lock. But now, as an addition in our construction, we also must uh, provide a second pre image for, for hash lock two. Okay, so the, the, the addition of the second pre image is, uh, is, is the difference from the original HTLC. And we have a third option uh, that anyone can get the tokens by providing the two primages, okay? So the primage for the first hash lock and, and the uh, primage for the second hash lock. And when I say anyone, I actually mean any miner because if a miner sees a transaction that provides the two primages, it can simply create a transaction of, of, of its own and provide the two primages himself and get the tokens. Okay, so actually the third option is an MEV opportunity uh, calling for miners to, to get the, the tokens in case uh, both privileges are revealed. The collateral, the, the optional uh, part uh, goes as follows. It uses the same lock parameters, okay? So same timeout, same uh, hash locks, and states the following. Uh, either Batman gets the tokens after the time lock or any miner gets the tokens after the time lock by providing the two privilege. Okay, so the collateral is only, you can get the tokens only after the time lock. Okay, so why does it work? Why, why is it secure? Why, why it's in some compatible? Uh, we have proofs. So the first part uh, is to show that it's secure, right? So no one can get it, no one can steal your money. Um, and the way we do that uh, is by defining the desired interactions with the contract. Um, as an example, um, you need to have the, pro the two primages to get the token using the options that require the two primages. 
or the miners initially do not know the two primages and can only learn them if they're published by a different part uh, and so forth. So we have, we compose this list of, uh, of the desired uh, possible interactions with the contract. Uh, and now we actually provide a protocol that satisfies them. So we have the, the desired uh, ideal functionality in, in, some, in some ideal world. Uh, we have the protocol in our, uh, in our working environment. Um, and then we, we show these are actually indistinguishable. I should mention that the protocol uses uh, the blockchain and the hash, fun and, and hash function. Uh, which we model as, as global ideal functionalities. So actually we show indistinguishability between the a hybrid world and the an ideal world. Okay, so given these possible desired uh, executions, we show these are the only possible interactions with the contract. And now we're going to show that actually the way you're benefited by to, to interact with the contract is as we expect. Okay, so we're gonna show incentive compatibility. And Again, we analyze this as a game by Antman, Batman, and the miners. Again, the, the type of analysis here, the, the suitable analysis is, is subgame perfect equilibrium. We have the P rounds uh, representing the, the, the blocks until the time it uh, elapses. And we show indeed that this construction is incentive compatible. Each party uh, is in incentivized to act in the desired way. Uh, I'll give you some intuition on why this works. So consider the, the, the following scenario, uh, either Ant-Man or Batman, but not both uh, publish one of the pre-images. Uh, this matches uh, the, the squares, uh, the, the red squares in the table below. Um, then the miners do not have the two pre-images, so the miners can get the token themselves and uh, the party that revealed the pre-image uh, gets the token. Alternatively, if both of Ant-Man and Batman uh, publish the pre-images, then both of them are available and then the miners can simply confiscate the, the money again uh, th this matches the, the you, you can ch check the table below for for the exact uh, specific one and um th this uh, also uh, enables me to explain why we need the collateral contract or why why the collateral contract is, is required so consider that if antman publishes the preimage his preimage the first preimage then Batman is guaranteed not to get the tokens anymore. So a spiteful Batman might, might just publish the second preimage of, like, to, to get back at Ant-Man or some sort of, uh, like to be just out of spite. So by having the collateral contract, we actually disincentivize him from doing that because if he attacks, then he loses the collateral and if he stays uh, silent, he gets the tokens. Okay, so th this concludes the, the, the proof part uh, and I'll present some implementations. So we have two implementations, one in the script for Bitcoin, the other is in Solidity for Ethereum. Uh, the overhead for Bitcoin is a few dollars. Uh, for Ethereum, we have a, a basic implementation which is a bit more costly, but uh, this can be reduced to again, a few dollars in, a, in an amortized version. Um, I should mention that um, the, the the overhead is is like uh, <laughs> really small compared to the counter bribe option, and obviously it's independent in the secured amount. It's only due to the increased uh, transaction fees because the contract is a bit more complex. So you need a uh, slightly more expensive transactions to interact with it. And when the contract can hold uh, an unbounded amount of tokens, so the the, the overhead is like negligible. And I should also mention that for uh, Lightning Network and off-chain payment channels, HTLCs do not make it to the blockchain unless there is a dispute. So even this low overhead is incurred only if there is a dispute, uh, which, is not, which is not supposed to happen anyways. But in case you have a dispute, you might want, you want, <laughs> you might prefer the, the secured version anyway, because there is a dispute. Okay, so this overhead is not expected to be something significant. We took our implementations and deployed them on the main networks. So uh, for both Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, on Ethereum, some of our transactions uh, were front run, uh, MEV, right? We know that it's widespread on Ethereum. Uh, so someone actually stole our money and I was one excited because 
this shows uh, this construction works. On the other hand, someone stole my money, so I was a bit upset. Uh, and on Bitcoin, uh, we didn't have any of these uh, MV optimizations. No one uh, stole our money. So um, why? why? Why wouldn't anyone take our money, right? This is a hanging fruit. Uh, is it because MEV is impossible on Bitcoin or is it because it's hard? So we actually show this is not the case. We implemented the Bitcoin MEV infrastructure uh, to support the MEV on Bitcoin uh, by patching the popular Bitcoin, Bitcoin core client, okay, which is used by 97% of the nodes, of the hash rate, sorry. And we have two patches. Uh, the first is specific for the HTLC bribe instance. And what, what it does is uh, it, uh, it notices uh, Batman's uh, bribe transaction and then rejects uh, Antman's transaction until the time it elapses and then uh, includes uh, Batman's transaction instead. This patch required 150 lines of code. We have a more general patch, uh, the MV infrastructure. Uh, which actually exports transaction data to an outer Pyth Python module. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and this allows anyone to implement any MV logic of choice. And then the, the, the patch uh, withdraws back the, the transaction data and places them the transaction in blocks. So you, you can implement any, any logic you want. And specifically, we implemented the MedHTC enforcement log logic, which is uh, looking for two pre images and then creating a transaction of your own that takes them out. Okay, so but this is a general infrastructure. To conclude, um, HTLCs are vulnerable. Uh, the attacks apply to Bitcoin as well. They are cheap and they're profitable. Uh, $2 bribe for $26,000 reward. Uh, the attacks rely on MV, which is easily implementable, and simply increasing the timeout does not make the attack too expensive to execute. We present MadHTLC. Uh, it's a simple plugin. It has a minor overhead compared to the secured amount. Uh, it is secure. It is incentive compatible. Uh, minor support is easily implementable. And the source is available online. So uh, thank you for uh, having me. And uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions.